Graphing quadratic functions in standard form by hand. First example, we're asked to graph the function y equals x squared plus 4x plus 5. Now by now you know that this is the equation of a quadratic function. The graph of a quadratic function will be a parabola. In this case it's going to open up because the leading coefficient is positive. Therefore there will be a minimum value of my quadratic function. Step number one is to find and graph the axis of symmetry. And the equation for the axis of symmetry is a good one to commit to memory because we use it a lot. It's x equals negative b over 2a. Now where we get the a and the b in that formula is in the coefficients of the function that's given. So a in the given function is 1 because it's 1x squared, b is 4 because it's 4x, and c, the constant term, is 5. So we want to do the opposite of 4 divided by 2 times 1. That's the opposite of 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So x equals negative 2 is my axis of symmetry. Good idea to graph it on the coordinate plane. From there, we want to find and graph the vertex. Once again, this is going to be a minimum value because this parabola is going to open up. So we take our x equals negative 2 because that's the, co the x coordinate of my vertex, and I substitute that into the given equation. I square negative 2 and I get 4. 4 plus negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So I plot the point negative 2 comma 1 and that is my vertex. This is the turning point of my quadratic function when the curve is going to change from decreasing to increasing. Next thing I want to find and graph the y-intercept and its reflection. Now the y-intercept when the equation is given in standard form will always be the c value because x equals 0, so y would equal 0 plus 0 plus 5, y would, the y-intercept is going to be 5, so I go ahead and I plot that, and then I plot the reflection of that point on the other side of the axis of symmetry. Okay, next thing I want to do is to find and graph another point that lies on the parabola along with its reflection. So it's a good idea to substitute, um, oh, maybe the number 1 in for x, because that seems to be a convenient, if I put a positive 1 into x, everything will be positive. So let's figure out what is the y value when x equals 1. That's going to be 1 comma 10. So I plot that point, and then I plot the reflection of that point. And finally, I graph these, I graph the curve by connecting these points with a smooth curve. And there's my function. All right, so now we're going to look at another function, but this one has a leading coefficient that is not 1. So therefore, it's not going to be the typical uh, wideness of the parent function. But same step, we're going to find and graph the axis of symmetry. First, we use x equals negative b over 2a. That's the opposite of 18 over 2 times 3. So x equals negative 3 is my axis of symmetry, which I've plotted. Now we want to find and graph the vertex. And remember, the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to lie on that axis of symmetry, so I'm going to substitute negative 3 in place of x to find the y-coordinate. So I get negative 3 times 9 minus 54 plus 13. My y-coordinate when x equals negative 3 is negative 14. So I go ahead and I plot that point. Next I want to find and graph the y-intercept. Do you remember what we said for the y-intercept? That would be 13 because when a graph, when a function is in standard form, a quadratic function, the y-intercept is always the constant term. So I'm going to go ahead and plot 13 on my y-axis and the reflection of that point. And finally, I want to find one other point. And I like to um, use pretty convenient numbers, so something maybe, maybe I could try negative 1 
<clears throat> um, for x. So I'm going to do 3 times 1, which is 3. 3 minus 18 is negative 15. Negative 15 plus 13 is negative 2. I'm going to plot negative 1 comma negative 2. And I'm also going to plot the point on the other side of that. And now that we have these points, 5 points is a good amount to go ahead and sketch out my curve. So that's how we graph quadratic functions in standard form.